Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana's channel, my name is Shanks and today we're gonna play PvP for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the map Anori and the patch is 1.06, random mirror all around the place, we are gonna team up with Mundo himself and facing against the mighty Mel Gibson and Rohan Smash. And for this game we get to play the Gondo faction and our ally is Gondor as well, hmm, I don't know about that, it's not the best when you have two Gondors in one team on the map Anorian. But maybe we can make it work. So with Gonzo, regardless what the matchup is on Anorian, you wanna always start with a blacksmith and um, a farm inside your base. And we always wanna recruit the Hobbit Pippin as well, very important. Now we're gonna wall check, it looks like we are facing against the evil faction at the top side. And also against the evil faction at the bottom side. Okay, not bad, I mean, I like to play against evil because that's gonna give us the chance to rush them all the time. Oh, I made a wrong wall check, guys. Actually, the top side guy is uh, either Gondor or Rohan, because our mouse was jumping, as you could see. We're gonna buy this farm with the two soldiers and lead forward. On the other side, we're gonna use the Hobbit's Pippin to, um, you know, to grab the second farm behind the base. And yeah, because our ally is on host, I'm assuming he's gonna go for the Gondor Knights. What is my, <laughs> what is my Pippin doing? What the heck? <laughs> This is so funny sometimes, this game. I cannot believe it. Alright, so let's see. Uh, are we against Gondo, Rohan? Oh, we see Mordor at the bottom side. Okay. And Rohan. Actually, that means we can now abuse the double land advantage we have. Because Rohan cannot cover the land, guys. And I'm not gonna move to the bottom side. I'm gonna actually move between the uh, farms from our open end in the middle. Let's see how much damage we will be able to deal. Okay. And yeah, my ally should be using Elvin Wood and that's the case now. Because if the model player will ever use his Tainted Land to cover this, I can also use my own Elvin Wood. Rohan player is trying to defend his ally with the Hobbit and Peasants. Let's see if he can do that. We have now enough money for the farm inside our base very soon. I mean, we might also go for the Blacksmith, but I'm gonna use actually Elvin Wood right there, because the model player was not covering the land just yet. Let's go. So Mora has 3 mills under his control, but maybe we can take down this one. Would be quite nice. And because our ally is gonna go for um, a Gondor Knight, we're gonna actually try to get Boromir and Faramir on the field. Faramir first, obviously. And try to rank, uh, rank them up to rank 5 for Faramir and rank 4 for Boromir this way. Um, we can unlock their leaderships, which is gonna be nice, because in this game, guys, we're gonna go for the combos. I hope Sauron is pointless because um, on the Elven Wood from us uh, it doesn't count, so he won't have the leadership buff from the Eye of Sauron on the land. And we can take this fight, no big deal. Maybe we can even get a level 2 soldier very soon. Micro around always. And our Hobbit is gonna support this area as well. Alright, very close to level 2. One more, I think, and then we are level 2. Now one more, can we get the last hit here with this one? Gonna be close, gonna be close! There we go, level 2 unlocked. I mean, unfortunately we have not many units left, but we can also use our Hobbit to kill the workers from the mill. And we know that we cannot take down this mill. Unfortunately we will end up losing this farm, but now we have enough money for Faramir. But we can always try to kill the workers with the soldiers as well. I believe our ally was not able to destroy this mill unfortunately, but it's fine. We are able still to deal a decent amount of damage to the motor economy. And our Faramir should be able to deal with this peasants, no big deal. But unfortunately, we will lose the farm, so that's kind of bad. Maybe we can even try to save this banner carrier from the level 2, which would be nice. And Faramir, we're gonna get him mounted very fast. This way, we can actually trample down those peasants quite easily and one shot them. And now we're gonna try to save for Boromir. Boromir and Faramir, guys, if you don't know, are coming out from the Zitter by being level 3. So Faramir is gonna unlock his leadership with level 5. That means we will need two more levels. And Boromir is gonna unlock his own leadership, which is a damage leadership, which we're gonna need with level 4. The one level needed. I'm gonna just commit now with Tobit against this mill and potentially be able to take it down. Our uh, soldiers, they will be able to survive. Micro around. Always try to hit the mill, very important. Let's go for uh, one more blacksmith inside the base. And then I think we're gonna start 
uh, saving for Boromir. Alright. Maybe we can even cloak our hobbits. That would be amazing. Let's see if we can do it. Yes, we can. That means the model player is not going to be able to buy this mill back now. Alright, we're going to send the soldiers back to the base and recover with them over time. Because remember, they are level 2, so they're going to respawn over time automatically. And after we get some units back on the field from the soldier battalion, we can actually use them to kill the farm from Rohan next to our base. And Faramir, you know, uh, should be able to level up quite fast because Rohan, Rohirrim units are quite weak against Faramir. And also on the map Anorian, we have a lot of creeps. Uh, our ally, maybe we need to get this peasants down with, the, with Faramir on horse. Oh, but our ally is sending his uh, horses there, which is quite nice, and he will be able to save the second farm, which is very important. I'm asking my ally to kill this farm for me, but maybe he's not paying attention. We can also send the soldiers. Now, it's going to be very important for our uh, ally with the Gondonites to always keep killing these meals from the Mordor player. Because if we don't do that, Mordor will just be super rich, and it's going to be very hard for us to win this matchup in long terms. Because Rohan Moro is a better matchup, definitely, than the Double Gondo. Alright, uh, we need some money, but look, we are saving for Boromir right now. We are only 200 resources away from getting Boromir, the captain of Gondo, on the field. And Faramir is gonna potentially hit level almost 5. I mean, not gonna, that, he's gonna be close to level 5 after being able to creep this uh, war clear. Alright, Boromir is going to be our next hero, and we will be able to buy this farm back, get also the money from the creep with Faramir. Look how close we are to get the leadership unlocked with level 5. We can also go for the heal now. So we have some sustain for our heroes, in the worst case. And it looks like my ally is going to creep this trolley at the top side, which I don't like to see a lot, because I would like to get this creep myself with, with Boromir. Buy this farm back. And the last two spots in our base is going to be saved for the Archer range and barracks, guys. And we have still one creep left, and that's the troll at the bottom side. But he was able to kill the Leia, however, he was not able to kill the troll or get the money. <laughs> so it's going to be nice for us because we will get the lasted on the troll and also be able to get the money from the ground. And again, go for the barracks and Archer range at the same time. And we need to try to get our combos on the field as soon as possible, because time is not in our favor. Trust me on that one. Okay, I mean, Boromir unfortunately wasn't able, but maybe we can kill this troll. Oh, nice one. He's bringing the troll to our Boromir. Boromir is able passively to knock down the enemy units. So he's a nice hero when it comes to kill the troll. Because he will keep knocking him down on the ground all the time, and he won't get the chance to move, as you can see yourself. And killing the troll is going to give us half a level. Uh, so we're going to get really close to get the leadership unlocked, which is very important for Boromir. The way, I mean, the reason why it's so important for us guys to get Boromir to level 4 is simple. Because when it comes to deal with the trolls, you want to have damage leadership. And Gondor has the, I mean, the only way Gondor can get damage leadership as a faction is from Boromir. Faramir is giving you armor, Elvin Wood gives you armor as well. But armor doesn't help that much against trolls. Against trolls you want to have damage, damage, damage. Very important, that's why it's so important for us to level up our Captain of Gondor to level 4. I mean our ally is doing a nice job, he's harassing all the time, that's what he needs to do, but soon he will be forced to deal with trolls, that's gonna be quite hard. We need to purchase the heavy armor from the blacksmith level 2. And we can just spam Elvin Wood because we have advantage. Rohan, in order to be able to get the Elvin Wood unlocked, has to get an after draft heal and two more power points on top of that. So he won't, he won't get the chance to use the Elvin Wood fast enough. That means we have two Elvin Woods against one Tainted Land. With that being said, we can also abuse that. We can always two-shot this Rohirrim, put Boromir next to Faramir, this way he can share experience. We are now really, really close, as you can see, to unlock Boromir's leadership. Uh, in order to get the archer range to level 2, we need to first of all recruit 4 archers. And that's gonna give us the chance to purchase the fire arrow upgrade from the archer range level 2. And if this game, for whatever reason, should be... Um, you know, done very very fast, we can also maybe add a second game to the same video. 
Because today we're gonna play a lot of 2v2 matches in BFMU1. And you can also let me let me know in the comment section down below, guys. Do you enjoy 2v2 gameplay more, or should we just do more 1v1s in the future? I would love to hear your opinion. All right, um, we need to be careful here because we don't know how many trolls Moro player has. If he has like two, three trolls, we can deal with them. But if he has more than that, it's gonna be quite difficult. I'm pinging my ally to deal with this orc with his uh, Gondor Knights. And Rohan has already heavy armor purchased, so we need to be really careful now. I mean, I'm not too worried about for, uh, Faramir because he can always get mounted on his horse. And then it's gonna be easy for him to escape, but Boromir is very immobile. So, you know, if he commits against my Boromir, he might get the chance to take him down. And losing the heroes right now would be the worst case scenario. Because that's gonna cost us time and money to get them back on the field, and that's gonna buy time for the model player to get stronger and stronger. And again, time is very important, that's why we need to move forward now. We have fire road upgrade purchase, heavy armor is also purchased, that's gonna make our units quite strong. And Boromir is like one kill away, look his experience, he's like one kill away from getting level 4. Okay, we need to make one more soldier battalion for the uh, combo number 4, and we will need that. It's gonna be kind of scary, but we have an Elvin Wood right in front of the model base, as you can see in the minimap. And we're gonna get on this Elvin Wood. And this way we will have more armor, more resistance, but also the enemy units, the enemy Rohirrim in this case, they won't have any, um, say it, any damage or armor leadership when they are fighting us on our own Elven boot. Okay, there we go. Now wait for the combo number 4. And hopefully we're gonna get Poromia level 4 very, very soon, otherwise it's gonna be kinda tough for us. And by the time we reach this Elven Wood, we should also have all the leaderships. He might actually uh, commit against us before we reach the opposite side of the map with the Rohirrim. But I believe that would be a mistake. Because we have so much armor now from Faramir, level 5. Oh, he's committing! Okay, is he gonna use Elven Wood? Oh, our ally should be using the Elven Wood, there we go. I mean, he was using Tinted Land, our ally was covering that. We didn't lose anything, by the way, guys. And that's actually so good for us, trust me. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking. Because Mordo has no tainted land anymore. So when he will when he will charge in with his trolls, he won't get the chance to use tainted land anymore, guys. And we have also heal available. I'm, I believe our ally has also heal ability available. Uh, we can just keep moving forwards now. No big deal. The game is freezing from time to time, unfortunately, but we should be good to go. And let's see how much damage we will be able to deal. Okay, so Farami is level 5, uh, leadership unlocked. Alvin Wood is gonna give us also 40% increased armor. That means we have a lot of armor. We're gonna also buy Benekeri upgrade on the combos to make them stronger level 2. It's gonna make them deal way more damage. And we need to be extremely careful though, because our opponent has a lot of Rohirrim with upgrades now. He has also Theoden on the field, so we need to stay on the land, we need to be uh, extremely patient in order to deal the damage we are looking for. Very important to play it kind of safe. Alright, so let's see. Boromir, we need to put him close to the combo stone, this way we can share experience. Look, our units are shining bright like a diamond. We gotta keep an eye on the trolls, deal some damage when we can. He's waiting for the drama troll. Without the drama troll, he will get one-shotted. We can kill some of this Rohirrim and try to get Boromir level 4. But Boromir is so far away, I don't know why he's... Captain, what are you doing, Captain? Come on, dude. Stay close to our combos. How dare you? I like the fact that our ally is actually dealing damage while uh, we are putting pressure with our combos. And he's charging in. We need to use Boromir to knock down the trolls. That's gonna be tough. Oh, we don't have the damage put leadership from Boromir just yet. Knock down the trolls one by one. Do you see that? I'm attacking the trolls one by one and knocking every single one of them. Uh, Fiesta. I don't see anything. We need to use heal now to heal up our... Oh, we missed Boromir with the heal. But Boromir is finally level 4. That's a damage leadership unlocked now. Uh, only two trolls are remaining. Use Boromir always, guys. With my you see Boromir is leading now to the second troll. Knocking him down on the ground. Uh, oh, Faramir. Faramir is going down, but Theoden has been taken down as well. 
Knockdown is level 5 troll as well, very important. Boromir is such a great counter in those kind of situations. Now move to the second troll. Knock him down as well. All the trolls are gone. And I believe we didn't lose a single combo battalion, but we lost Faramir. Try to save Boromir, very important. And now we need to disengage. There is no reason of us staying anymore. Get Faramir back on the field from the Tsita. And actually what we can do now is we can buy the middle camp on the map Anurian. I think Mordor lost a lot. Like Mordor lost 4 trolls, drama troll. We killed Theorin, we killed a lot of Rohirrim. I think we are in a good spot right now. We can also go for the Alvin Elias summon now from the Spellbook if you want to. And let's go actually for that. We can use now the Alvin Elias to kill some of the Rohirrim. And support our ally. Rohirrim they have to disengage now. Because he doesn't have the Horseman Shields upgrade just yet, which means he's quite vulnerable against archers. Um, but our ally actually kinda runs away now. And our, I mean, Alvin Ally's summon was kinda wasted. By the middle, make a well. If all the 4 combos still remaining on the field, as you can see. Boromir is also alive, he's finally level 5, that means we're gonna for the next attack have the damage leadership available from the, from the beginning. It's quite nice. And combine, you can also combine the soldiers with the rangers, by the way, if you don't know. The rangers are the best archers from the Gondor faction. They shoot way, way faster. So with that being said, we will have four, five combos now uh, under our control, which is quite nice. Now all we need to do is recover over time at the wells. And actually go for one tower guard. I believe we need a tower guard here to protect um, the middle. You know, when we move forward uh, from the middle... And uh, the middle is gonna be open for our potential attack, the tower guards, we can place them. Because the good thing about the Gondor camp is, there is only one way of entering the base. So we could potentially place the tower guards right at the gate, or at the opening from the camp. This way the Rohirrim, they will never be able to enter the middle camp. And just to make sure that we have some protection for the middle camp. Alright, just wait for the Faramir to come back, he should be back very very soon, there we go. Uh, we're gonna lose this farm unfortunately, but it's fine, we don't need money right now, we have enough money. Get Faramir mounted, this way he can reach this combos faster. And let's not lose any more time, and actually keep moving forward instantly. By the time we reach to the opposite side of the map, we should also have our heal from the spellbook back up. Okay, now is the, uh, you know... Now is the time. This is gonna. If we lose this fight, we might actually lose this game because we don't have anything else but the combos. We can also use the Hobbit to, buy, to get the farm back, which is quite nice. Faramir can get now dismounted to join the combos. Boromir, as the captain himself, is leading the armies to victory. And we can also try to save for Gandalf, but I believe the game won't last that long. But we shall see. And yeah, Mordo, I don't know how many trolls he was able to get on the field, but I'm assuming he has some catapults because I see the siege works inside the base. And when it, when this is the case, we need the help from our ally to kill these katas because combos are very vulnerable against katas. Teamwork is very important. Micro away, don't lose your combos for no reason. Uh, Boromir is level 5, you could also, if you want to, use the Horn of Gondor, but I think it's not necessary. Uh, combo, uh, you know, micro with the combos around. Make sure to not be at the same spot with every single one of them. This way the cutter can actually deal devastating amount of damage. But they have so much leadership right now, they don't get one-shotted. They have the Faramir leadership from the uh, from level 5. And Elven Wood. You can kill this troll. Look how much damage we are able to deal now with Boromir. He's down. This cut is gonna go down next. My ally has to help me out a little bit here to kill this... Katas faster. There we go, both the Katas are gone. And he has not many trolls, that should be, I think, game right there, because I don't see them defending this one. If if Theorin, you know, approaches, we can one-shot them with Faramir's one and arrow. And combos. Far you know, Theorin is a strong, sportive hero, but he's very vulnerable. Against damage. Okay, look, <laughs> we are able to catch this. And the Moro player Rohan Smash is leaving the game. And we are, I believe, victorious in this one. Kill a drama troll, no big deal. We have so much leadership now. Gandalf is also adding in some combat experience. That's why our combos are able to level up quite fast. Look at this. We have one level 6 combo. Two level 6 combos, actually. So pretty strong. He's gonna use the Easter Light on the Theodin, but that's not gonna be able to one-shot him. 
Yeah. Unfortunately for us, we were not in the range to use the Wanding Arrow because Wanding Arrow plus the Easter Light. Nice with a plus from our ally, I like it. Mundo is popping off this, this game as well. Nice teamwork, and when you have a good teamwork coordination and when you know what you are doing, you can even win bad matchups. And that's, um, I mean, that's not a horrible matchup, that's a hard matchup still for Double Gonzo. Can use Captain of Gonzo from Faramium to give experience, just why not? And yeah, I mean, Rohan plays, he keeps playing, but I think it's not gonna do much at this point. We have almost money for Gandalf. And we have also the power points for Gandalf to fight, but I'm assuming he won't, um, you know, stay in the game anymore because there is no point. He cannot win this game solo. He will indeed leave the game, guys, and that's it. GG well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Actually, this was a quite short game. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add another gameplay to this video later on. And uh, so this video is longer. Thank you guys for watching and uh, don't get away because the second game is going to start right now. Alright guys, the second game is all about to begin. We have now um, the same matchup. Uh, Munzo and me against Rohan Smash and Mel Gibson. But for today we are on a different, for this video we are on a different map. Duradan Forest is the map. We're going to get the chance uh, to play the Rohan faction this time which is quite nice. And Duradan Forest is a quite big map, so I'm assuming we will be forced to make many, many extra peasants. But Rohan is a quite strong faction in this one, and I like that. Right, always start with two farms inside the base. Uh, buy the Hobbits every single time, and get the draft, so we can use it immediately to give weapons to our peasants. Wall check, this is evil faction. So we need to go for harassment instantly. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually go for the attack with the starting two peasants without grabbing any of these farms outside. This way, um, I mean, Rohan is strong early on because you get the chance to make many, many extra peasants from the farms. And you have also the Hobbit, which can help you to actually buy these farms. That's why we need to now put pressure on the, on the, on the evil opponent, either Mordor or Isengard. Uh, in order to take down his mills because you know this map is quite big and you have many many settlements if you don't hurt the economy from the evil faction early on it's gonna be very impossible to deal with them later on okay we have a rohan opponent um our ally is mordor by the way guys mordor is a really strong i mean the strongest faction on this map and we are playing against mordor yeah mordor now gibson is mordor so once again, Mordor is the strongest faction on a map like Turadan Forest. We're gonna just focus against the mill. And I hope Sauron must use from our ally, I believe. And the thing is, the orcs, they cannot win the 1v1 situation against the peasants, even with the Eye of Sauron. Alright, we're gonna be able to take down this, um, this farm. Our ally is moving the eye, as you can see in the minimap. But the eye won't be that in time. We can also fight this orcs, no big deal. Get drafted with these peasants and also fight in the middle. And again, making extra peasants in this matchup is very important. With these uh, peasants now, we can also kill this golem potentially. And also the orcs in the middle of the map. Buy this farm now. And stole. Maybe we can even commit now against the second meal of this model player, Mal Gibson. Buy this farm. Keep moving forward. Try to go for harassment. As soon as we have the money, we're also gonna buy the farm where our hobbit is at. But first of all, buy these farms in um, the middle. On the map Turadan Forest... Uh, oh, wait a second, we need to deal with this orc. On the map Turadan Forest, you have four settlements in the center of the map. Four farms. And fighting for the middle is very important for every single player. Beautiful. I mean, we are having now in total one, two, three, four farms under our control. We're gonna have a lot of money very, very soon. And we also have make the, you know need to make sure that to be that we actually kill all the op oh our hobbits might be in trouble. I'm gonna just leave him there because in the worst case scenario, guys, we can also make one more extra peasant from the farm, so we should be good to go. Oh, oh, oh. Invisibility? No, <laughs> he was so young. Make more extra peasants. Kill this mill at the bottom side and get also this farm in the middle of the map. Now we have four settlements in the middle, guys. That's a lot. Let's kill this meal, shall we? Uh, we potentially might need some extra peasants here and there to defend our uh, farm against those orcs. 
Stable is gonna be nice when you have it early, but I think you don't need that early because this is a quite big map and making a great use of your peasant spam can actually be quite efficient. Okay, this mill is gonna be taken down next. I feel like we have dealt quite a lot of damage to the Mordor's economy. We killed two of his mills, which is quite a lot. Our ally has two orc pits inside the space. He is also quite behind now. Uh, that means we might need some help to our ally very soon. Alright, buy this farm as well, shall we? Or kill this farm. Get drafted with the peasants to defend ourselves. There we go, defend. We can win this 1v1 fight. And if he fights us, they're actually our peasants, they might hit level 2. Let's get some Rohirrim on the fields now, we have so much money. Uh, not, not cash floating is very important. Our peasants are gonna hit level 2 around this side. Which is very nice for us, I like it. We can also make some... Yeah, actually, we don't need to make extra peasants. We can now send this peasant battalion to this top right settlement. Kill this farm slowly but surely. Kill this mill with the level 2 peasant. And get many, many Rohirrim on the field. We have so much money. Look at our money, guys. That's crazy, right? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 farms under our control right now. Which is insane. 7 farms outside of our base. <laughs> we are gonna be rich like rich and rich in this one. Okay. I mean, we can now also buy this one back. Uh, we are looking great and strong. We're gonna have a lot of uh, Rohirrim on the field very soon, which is gonna help us to deal... I'm asking my ally for I, which is gonna help us to deal... Uh, I'm actually gonna try to go for a, for a base rush. Oh, but he has some towers. Oh, I'm actually pinging him, but it might be too late. Does he have only one tower? It looks like he has only one tower. But this tower is still in the range to deal, to protect this. Oh, I need to go back now. Uh, that's that's pointless. Okay, that's pointless. We need to be careful now to not lose our Rohirrim. Oh, that was not the best idea, to be honest with you, but it's fine. It's not a big deal. He's gonna use Tainted Land. We can get heal and have some sustain for our Rohirrim later on by this... Or kill this mill in the middle of the map. Kill this mill right there with the peasants. Very nice. And buy this one and send them to the bottom right settlement. And look how much pressure our peasants were able to create. In the early game. Yeah, that's why, you know, peasant spam is very important. You gotta kill this mill in the middle, which is quite nice. We can also buy this farm at the top right side very soon. And pressure, pressure, pressure. Killing is on the fields now. Uh, soon we have the money for the armory as well. Um, I'm sending now Tyrion with the Rohirrim actually to this uh, work, uh, goblin lair at the top right side. And I'm gonna also try to get the last hit with Tyrion guys. So he will potentially hit level 4 at the latest stages of this game. Okay, there is another mill which will, which will be... I can't even talk. Which we will be able to take down next. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I made a mistake. <laughs> I grouped... Look how many Rohirrim we have. My micro is horrible right now. Sorry for that. I need to remind you that I'm not on host player in this one. It's our ally Mundo who is being the host. So we have not the best micro right now. But as long as we don't lose the Rohirrim, we are in a good spot. Go for the armory next. And keep up the pressure all the time. We can also buy the settlement now at the bottom right side. And we're gonna make sure that Theodian is the one who gets the last hit. Oh, he was capturing this outpost, by the way, now. With the, uh, our opponent's model player, Mel Gibson. This goblin layer is gonna be taken down next. But again, Theodian is gonna get the last hit. Very important. He's gonna get level 2 for that reason. Kill this mill, shall we? Level 2 and a half, actually, guys. Only 1 and a half levels away from getting the glorious charge unlocked. We can kill this mill next at the top right. Kill this mill next. And also creep this goblin layer. We have a lot of Rohirrim on the fields now. Uh, we are waiting for the armory to come up. We have so much money. We can even make one Rohirrim archer now to level up to uh, um, you know, our stable to level 2. This is going to give us the chance to get the horseman shields purchased from the stable level 2. Okay, let's get this creep, shall we? Alright, beautiful. Theodin is level 3 now, one level away from getting the Glorious Charge unlocked. We have two power points collected, which we can invest if we need to, uh, into the Elven Wood. I'm actually curious if the more. Oh, but he has Haradrims on top of that, and they are dealing so much damage to our units. Gotta be careful. 
We can deal with this orcs, no big deal. Tilion is gonna get more and more experience. We need to be careful, send them to the well to regenerate. Okay, so we are in good spot, I would still say. I believe that Mora is not that... I mean, he has probably not much in his base because he was investing all, he, all the money he got into the outpost. Which, of course, is gonna pay him off big time later on, but early on it's a lot of investment. So I'm assuming he has no trolls inside the base. And he's also not close to get a Nazgul on the field. I would be surprised if he has a Nazgul, but I don't think it's gonna be the case. Because we were able to kill these mills over and over again. Alright, heavy armor purchase. Let's go for a base rush, shall we? Let's go. Let's see how much damage we will be able to deal with. Also heal awaitable, so not a big deal. I'm asking my ally for the, for the Eye of Sauron, but it looks like he doesn't have it. How is going to be taken down? He's focusing our Theorin with the arch uh, with the tower though. We need to be careful. Theorin has to be careful. He's taking way too much damage. Smart move from him. You can also buy the horseman shields now. And send even more units to this side. Theorin! 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 Oh! Theorin! He was so young. <laughs> Alright, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. We were able to kill the Haradrim Palace before he was able to get any Easterlings or the soldiers of Rune on the field, which is quite nice for us. If also horseman shield purchase, so we are almost taking zero damage from this uh, towers, which is quite good. Get some more Rohirrim on the field, shall we? But he has many, many towers, so we need to be kind of careful. We're gonna, we're gonna keep up the pressure all the time. Get as many buildings as we can. I mean, just take a look into the minimap right now. We have so much map control. Okay. Be careful. They have also peasants still remaining on the field. Uh, we might lose this Rohirrim though. Am I, am I playing too risky? I think, I believe I'm playing kind of too risky. Let's get him out from this base as soon as possible. I thought I purchased the blades. What happened? Maybe I misclicked. I was wondering guys why I cannot upgrade the, uh, the blades yet on my Rohirrim. Oh, <laughs> that's unfortunate man. We lost them. Be careful to not lose this once as well, very important. As long as we keep running away with the Rohirrim, we should be fine. Like, he, he doesn't have Palantir, that means he will never be able to catch us. We have also Rohirrim around this side, I didn't even notice. <laughs> I mean, I have so many units right now on the field, it's hard to know or to tell. Because look how many units we have, we have Rohirrim arches, everything, you know? Okay. But we have so much money, so we can, buy, you know, buy upgrades on every single one of them and go for a big rush now. Kildin is back in the business. And the next rush is gonna hurt him big time, because next rush is gonna include uh, 4 Rohirrim with full upgrades and Theodin. We're gonna go for the Rohirrim matches next, that's why we need to purchase the fighter upgrade very first uh, from the archery range. In the second we have the blades purchase, we can also demolish the armory from Rohan because you don't need to keep the armory on the field when you have everything purchased. Okay. Elven allies to sport. Uh, we don't need to fight for this outpost, we can just ignore this outpost and actually go for the main base, main base instead. I, will, I would say the main base is just much more vulnerable right now. I farm there. And let's see how much damage we will be able to deal now. They have all blades now as well. They're gonna hit very, very, very hard. And he's focusing down our Theodin once again with its towers, but... I would still like to keep my, uh, my Theodin close to this side. He will need the help from his ally if he, wants to if he wants to be able to survive this, because otherwise he's gonna just lose the map, the entire base, I mean. I will be used from our ally as well. Target the Rohirrim from our opening with the Elven allies, very important. Theodin! Heal! Oh! Close, 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 be careful with Theodin, don't lose him once again. Look how much damage he's taking from the towers. Right, we were able to destroy this um, Theodin, we need to send him back to the base. We were able to destroy the Zitta, which is very important. Our Elven allies are doing a nice job against this Rohirrim from our opponent. Plus, he doesn't have the Horseman shields just yet. This base is gonna be taken down for sure. Oh, Theodin is running it down. He was running through the outposts, and I think the Haradrims were able to kill him. <laughs> That's unlucky. <laughs> Alright, but it's fine. We are able to do so much damage to this base. Look at this. The base is looking empty to me, guys. The base is looking empty to me. 
All right, beautiful. I mean, okay. The Moro is gonna be defeated, but it's the Rohan player actually who's leaving the game first. Rohan Smash has left the game, Rohan Smash has been defeated. And now we can also start killing this outpost next. But killing the main base from Moro is so much easier than from Isengard. Why? Because the furnaces from Isengard are way tankier than the slaughterhouses from Mordor. So killing the slaughterhouses is quite easy. We can buy upgrades on these units to keep, you know, fighting for the map control very important. Kill these orcs, no big deal. Our Rohirrim archers are doing a nice job around this side as well. Not bad at all. We have so much money still. But during all this time, we kind of lost the middle uh, of the map, but it's fine. I mean, we killed the entire base. I believe that this, this is a fine trade. The goblin is still remaining on the field, by the way, at the bottom right side. Right, just make sure to fight for the map control once again. Get the farms under our control to keep the money, income, safe and good. And, yeah. By the way, if you don't know, guys, the peasants, they are dealing way more damage to the citadel from the outpost than the Rohirrim. So, if you have peasants around with Rohan, you can always use them to kill the outpost. Very easily. We have also end summon now. Let's summon the ends actually and break the ball, uh, break the wall of Rohan, shall we? Beautiful. We can use one of the ends to kill the Tita from the outpost and help also with the um, peasants later. Tita is back in the business. He's almost level four. We lost him twice, though. I mean. We, gotta, we also gotta give credits to uh, the opponent model player because he was always making sure to focus um, our Theodin down with the towers and Theodin is very very weak. He dies quite fast. Get a farm there. And destroy this outpost, shall we? Okay, beautiful. I mean, he has a Nazgul on the field. It's fine. One Nazgul all alone, all alone is not gonna make anything for him. Um, and we can also get potentially Eowyn on the field, but right now we have no money to do that. Eowyn is a nice and potentially the cheapest counter to the Nazgul slash Witch King. Her smite ability is dealing so much damage. Gonna lose this farm, but it's fine. He broke two parts of the wall, which is quite nice. We can also buy this outpost maybe now with this end. And use this peasants to take down the second outpost, shall we? We buy this. There we go. Now at this outpost we can make a well and the statues just for some sustain our horses. Oh, oh that's so close, man. <laughs> this uh, Haradrims on top of the Zitta, they are doing so much damage. They are dealing so much damage, I mean. Okay. We have level 10 Rohirrim, by the way, guys. Eowyn is also on the field. Um, and yeah, let's see. Eowyn, Smite is going to deal bonus damage. We have one Rohirrim Archer on the field as well. Group them all together and go for the base of Rohan, shall we? Okay. Almost glorious charge as well. Okay. I mean, we are playing two versus one now because the Rohan player left the game as I was killing his allies' base completely. And he also lost two battalions of Rohirrim, if I'm not mistaken, to my Alvin allies. Um, it's hard from this point to turn this game around. Okay, I mean, all we need to do now is just kill this outpost, because um, in order to win the game, we need to kill all the outposts, camps, and the base. Our ally is destroying his base right now. <laughs> and I believe if this base goes down, this game is also gonna be over. So GG well played, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. The likes are helping quite a lot. And you can also um, check me on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards. The link for that is going to be in the description down below. I would love to meet you in the next live stream. We are streaming every Tuesday, Thursday, um, Friday, and Sunday. So this Sunday, uh, I mean, I would love to see you also at uh, Monday. I mean, I, I I don't even know what I'm saying right now. We are streaming many, many, many days. Uh, but the days you, are, you will always be expecting us to stream is Friday and Sunday. And also uh, Thursday. In those three days, we are streaming every time. And I would love to meet you guys in the live stream. Sorry, couple of the first games of the day. Thank you guys for watching. GG well played. 
victorious as always you know me of course i'm not uploading the games in which i get smashed <laughs> but again have a fantastic time see you next time take care peace